Now, uh, this slide I think is today's most important one. These are what I call the summertime projects. All right, the task which you could really make a start on the observation part, not the writing up, where you could make a start on the observation part over the summer holidays. And in some cases, you really do need to do it over the summer. You can't do it in September. Okay. Uh, unaided ones. Uh, shadow stick. Shadow stick is quite simple. You get a stick, you put it in the ground when the sun's out, and you get a shadow. Everybody with me so far? Good. And what will happen as the sun moves across the sky, the shadow moves the other way, and you record when the shadow's at its shortest length, and you can use that, as we'll see later on this morning, to calculate your longitude. Okay? Um, it's a quite a nice project, I think, because it gives a definite output. When it comes to analysis, when it comes to evaluation, you've got a definite figure to get your teeth into. Okay? Nice and simple, involves a stick. Um, if you're sat around thinking that we haven't got anything like blockers at home, it involves a stick. Right? Um, and I think it's a really good one to do. Now, the other one that's quite important, I think, is meteor showers. Okay? Meteor showers happen at certain, well, meteors happen all the time. If you're out at night and you look at the night sky, you sometimes see little flashes of light. They're called meteors. They're bits of rock and dust burning up in the top of the Earth's atmosphere. Now, at certain times of year, we get what are called meteor showers, where you don't just get one or two, you get loads and loads of them, all coming from the same direction at a particular time of the year. Okay? If you think of the Earth orbiting the Sun, it's because along the Earth's orbit at various points, there are little bits of dust. And sometimes the Earth passes through them and we get loads and loads of meteors called a meteor shower. Okay? Now, if you come back in September and say, I fancy that project, when's the best meteor shower? Well, there's about 12 of them across the year. You can look them up. There's a list on the internet. The best one by miles is called the Perseids. And it happens round about the 12th of August. So if you come back in September saying, I quite fancy doing that, the, you've just missed the best meteor shower of the year. And it is the best one by a long way. All right. The next best one, I think it's the Leonids in November or something like that, is no, never anywhere near as good. And of course the weather's rubbish normally in November, it's cloudy skies. So particularly if you're going somewhere nice, where they get nice clear skies in the summer, if you're going on holiday, or even if you're staying around here, where you might hope the weather might be quite good, um, meteor showers is really good because you could get a whole project done in one evening. You get yourself a star map and a deck chair, you go out, you look at the sky, you see, oh, there's a meteor, right, mark that on my star chart, there's another one, etc., etc., and you produce that, and that would effectively be the observation you need for one piece of coursework. If it doesn't, you had a nice half an hour sat out in, the sun, in, the, um, in a pleasant summer's evening. Okay? They sometimes have it, I don't know if you've seen it, they sometimes have it on the weather forecast. Mid-August, they say, look out tonight for the meteor shower. Um, it doesn't just happen on one particular day, it's all through that bit of August. If you look in a certain direction, you're quite likely to see lots of meteors what's called a meteor shower, all right? I think you can see why I call it a summertime project. If you come back in September, you're unlikely to have much success. People who try and do the Leonids and the Eta Aquarids and stuff like that, they're much less impressive meteor showers. They generally produce far fewer meteors and you're struggling with December, January, February weather. It, you know, we're sitting outside for an hour or two in a deck chair, it really isn't very nice. Um, if you want to do meteor showers, I would definitely have a go over the summer. Okay, we'll talk a bit more about that later on. Okay. Uh, you can do meteor shower by drawing it, or you could get a camera to do the hard work for you. If you're the ultimate and lazy person, meteor shower photography, you set your camera up pointing at the, where the meteors are coming from, you open the shutter, so you don't just take a photo in a you know, hundredth of a second like an ordinary camera does, you lock the shutter open, you go and watch telly for a few hours, you come back, any meteors that have passed, of course, will appear on your photograph as, can you imagine? Light. So in theory, yeah, there'll be little, little streaks of light. Again, constellation drawing sounds nice and easy. Um, yeah, I, I, it's hard to do it well, I would, I would say. Constellation drawing can be a bit tricky to get anything above an average mark. What do you do? You draw the constellations. Um, if you read the details on your sheet, you'll see that actually you don't just draw the constellations, you use the stars to estimate their brightness. So there's a bit more to it than that. Um, it's a bit of a last minute one. You often see people where other projects have gone wrong and they get to March and they've got nothing done for their other project and they go out and they do some constellation drawing, all right? So 
It can be good. Constellation photography, particularly, I think is really very straightforward. It's not too difficult to get, I think, really good photographs of constellations. Because constellations are quite big. Are you with me? A good picture of the Andromeda galaxy, you need a really powerful telescope, don't you, to sort of zoom in. Constellations, you don't need anything special. You don't need a super zoom lens like sports photographers at Wimbledon use. You can just do it with a fairly ordinary camera, all right? So that's one we'll look at a bit later on. There are, of course, the alien versions. Uh, lunar features, I talked about meteor shower, constellation photography, and as some people mentioned, sundial. If you've got a sundial near you, local church maybe, you can sit there with a clock and a sundial, and they'll record different times, and you can measure the difference, um, and that apparently is a, is a task that you can do. Okay, so those are the ones you might be thinking, oh, what are you thinking of doing them? Something like meteor shower, I would say, whatever you want to do, have a go. Because if you sit out for a, a nice summer's evening for a couple of hours, and it works out really well for you, you've just done a whole project. If it doesn't work out, well, you've had a nice evening, all right? Whatever you were planning to do, things like meteor shower are just too good an opportunity. And as I said, the opportunity is in the middle of August, okay? Also, shadow stick, we're going to have a go at that this morning. Um, Shadow stick you need to do basically round about midday, okay? And doing projects round about midday, think about school week. You've got five days at school and the two that you're at home are normally rainy, aren't they? Last few weeks it's rained every weekend, doesn't it? So uh, shadow stick is a really good one to do 